please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. So I thought it'd be interesting um, during escorts to fire up a spare screen and use um, some more sort of ordinary stakes and show you a, a couple of simple things. Um, what you can see I'm doing here is I've um, put some money into the market and uh, established a position at 4.4 and this will give you a feel for just how slow these sort of large markets are and the way that they work and how you can actually leave huge amounts of gaps in your decision making and feel absolutely fine and under control. So we've established a position here, it's a, it's a reasonable sized position, we're not being particularly aggressive but what we're doing is we're backing the favour here in the expectation that the price will come in. And the reason that we're doing that is we can see that there's been a lot of activity on the favourite. It's near the bottom of its trading range. It's probably headed towards four. Can you see the money stacked below? There's loads just above four and not much below it. And there's a bit of money behind it, but uh, not much there. And you can see the progression of the graph here. You can see it's been coming in, coming in, coming in. And there's been reasonable amounts of money um, attacking the price at around this level. But the thing that you'll notice more about this trade is just how slow it is. So you can see I'm putting in closing positions here and they're very tight to where we've actually entered the market simply on the basis that because it's a big race meeting we're not expecting it to move that much. So uh, the position that I've established I've put into the market and we're just expecting it to move somewhere down towards four. And as we go through this video which is a very long and slow one uh, because that's the way that these markets work. You'll see how I manage the position and how things develop from there. So the natural state of the market is actually for the price to uh, bob up and down and uh, move around a little bit. It's very, very rare for you to be able to establish a position in the market and for it to go exactly the way that you want it at the moment at which you establish the position. So it's more important that you establish the position, you wait um, for that to mature but if it starts to go wrong and you see that the reason that you did that uh, is d deteriorating then you just dump the position you just think you know what I made a mistake I'm out of here but you can see here that I'm expecting the price to come in it will probably wobble a bit and then it will come in another tick and then wobble a bit come in another tick and then wobble a bit but you can see here the position we don't feel is vastly under threat the traded uh, the money traded at current prices. So if you look at 4.4 where it's flashing, that's telling you that money's being traded there. And then if you look on the right hand side of that, you'll see um, the amount that's going through. So there's 60, 70,000. You just saw there, there was a little bit of money that pulled the price down. Now, the reason you're not seeing my um, mouse cursor wiggle around and indicate things to you here is because I'm busy trading on another screen here. So on a big meeting like an Ascot, I'll trade. Uh, quite aggressively on my main account. And you can see I've just come in here to modify some orders. I'll trade quite aggressively on my main account. I'll do bet DAC, probably do one other thing, and then I've got this screen up. So I'm effectively looking after four positions in the market here. But of course, if I'm trading it on another screen, very simple to understand what's going on within the market. Just need to come back and modify positions every now and again. So what you saw me just do there was I just pulled a couple of uh, positions up. So what I'm sort of saying is, based upon the amount of time that we've got left, and the movement that I'm expecting, I'm just exiting the trade slightly quicker here. So basically the price has come down, hasn't come down, or there's not enough momentum to pull it much further. So all I did was nudge up my closing position. I'm basically just saying, you know what, I'm not sure all, all of these are going to get matched, so I'm just going to pull the position up uh, by one. And you'll see me come back and do this on occasion. But at the moment, if the price goes to 4.5, and bumps back out towards there, there's no panic because our position is partially closed and we would still make a profit even if we exit at 4.5. But if you notice what happens here, the price ticks up uh, towards 4.5, then you can see a little bit of money coming in at uh, 4.4 uh, and you can see that I've just spread out the closing trades again. So I'm now saying that I don't expect it to reach four, but I, it will go through those orders at some point. I'm not panicking, I'm not jumping out. And very often what you find traders doing is they'll get in at the bottom of this range, they'll get out at the top, and then they'll repeat that again and again to lose money. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to focus on 
where is the market generally headed? You can see me looking at the volume here saying, well, there's a lot being matched at 4.4. So I'm expecting that to go down to 4.3, which it has. And that's all I'm doing. I'm not expecting any, any fireworks from this market. It's a big market. It's a slow market. Um, money's going to come in. It's going to influence where the price is going to go next, but it's unlikely to move at 20 ticks. So that's all I'm doing is just keeping an eye on where that money's being matched um, and how frequently it's being matched and therefore what the next likely tick is. So you can see loads of money above and below it. This price isn't going to move dramatically with that amount of money in it. We've established our position in the market quite effectively, so we don't need to worry about that. It's just really a question of how much time we've we got left, how many orders are going to get filled, and do we need to pull some of those up to get them filled a bit quicker so our position is closed before the start of the race. So we go into the market with a certain stake. We're trying to feed that stake back into the market. Here you can see the pattern of activity. It's lower highs and then it's gone relatively flat here, but there's good volume. So that's the stage of the market that we're in at the moment. There's a limited amount of time left. So we have to start thinking about, you know, how do we close? But we can see there that there's been very little activity above where the current price is, plenty below it. So we're anticipating that it may come in a tick or two. And that's where we're going to put our closing positions. But there comes a point in the market where it begins to be a race against time. There's only a limited amount of time left and you have to get out of your position, whatever that position is, whether it's a profit or loss, by the time you reach post time. So it's important that um, you do that. So you can see here there's lots of money at 4.5, not much at 4.4. Um, it's possible that it could get down to 4.2 where we have an order waiting. But if we don't think we're going to achieve that, you'll see me come back across and start dropping orders back in. So can you see at 4.5, there's loads of support there. So what I've done is put two closer to where that money's being matched and cancelled two further down. So our net closing position uh, is still in equilibrium. What you can see on the screen there is how much we need to get matched. And it's just a question of where do we get that matched in this particular market. So we need a little bit of money to get matched at 4.4. At the moment there's 170,000 matched at 4.4 and about 80,000 matched at 4.5. So there's 14,000 waiting to get matched at 4.4. I could move the position up there or maybe somebody would come and take it. Boom, there you go. And now we're in a good position to get matched at 4.3. We may not get matched at 4.3, but we're in a good position to get matched. And we didn't. So the price goes back up to 4.4. But because we're in a good Q position to get matched at 4.3, we may as well leave it there. But can you see how the market is going down a bit, going up a little bit, going down, going up a little bit, going down, going up a little bit, going down. And when you're actively trading, you look to exploit that activity. What a lot of traders do when they're first active and in the market is they're in and out all over the place trying to second guess exactly where that movement is going. And I'm not doing that. I'm basically saying this is the general direction in which this is going. This is where it's roughly headed. And I'm going to put all my positions around exploiting that. I don't care what happens in the very, very short term. I'm just going to put my orders there. We're going to gradually get them filled. And then when we approach post time, you know, that will be it. We'll, we'll get out of whatever we've got there, hopefully a profit. And more often than not, it generally is. If you look at what's been happening during Ascot Week this week, it's been a very good week. Um, made a couple of mistakes, generally on the first couple of races. But by the second or third race, I've got a good feel for the market and I'm beginning to push harder and using larger stakes and have generally um, done very well from that. I'll do a proper video on um, Ascot and a summary of what happened at Ascot uh, probably in the next week or two. So you can see what's going on there, but it's been a very good week. But this is typically how this type of a market uh, will exhibit itself at Ascot. You can see they're very slow. Um, it's a little bit dull. There's big money came in there at 4.5. That will help us get filled at 4.4. And uh, you can see that, uh, you know, it's actually uh, quite dull, really. There isn't a great deal going on here. Uh, but this is the nature of some of these larger markets. This is why some people find them harder to trade because they're so different from the rapidly moving, pinging around that you get in some of the smaller markets. But nonetheless, it doesn't mean that you can't trade it. It just means that you need to adapt um, your style to make sure that you're doing an effective job here and doing it within the time frame and the sort of movement that you expect to see. 
So you can see there's been 200,000 matched at 4.4, 117,000 at 4.5. You know, gradually the money's coming through there. We've been matched at 4.4. Hopefully we'll get matched to 4.3 fairly quickly. And you can see I've just taken the order out at 4.4. And then the final option, that, uh, or the final operation, I should say, that we do in the market is to hedge it. So um, overall, um, our total profit on this market would have been about £150 divided by 4.4, uh, which is going to come out at about uh, 30 or pound, £34. And um, we can hedge that position now and move on to the next race. But yeah, you know, I know I've been talking a lot in this video. Um, to fill in what's going on in the market, but this is how these markets behave. And I thought it may be interesting for you to see that and to see a, a trade go through with reasonable stakes.